Okay, it takes a couple of seconds. So what am I gonna see? How will I know? Oh, we are live. Welcome everyone to our discussion today. I'm Erica Elita. I will be your facilitator. And today we are going to be discussing the truth about Green Rocks. So what am I gonna see? Green Rocks is a project, a development that is happening right now in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And today we have Mel Renee and Sean Rose joining us to explain to us about this project. So first I'd like to introduce Mel Renee. Mel is the CEO of Melty Properties Incorporated. She's based in Canada, but is of St. Vincentian lineage. And so she is the spearhead, the, the brainchild behind this project. Welcome, Mel. Thank you. Welcome everybody. Um, thanks everybody for joining and I encourage everybody to leave their comments and their feedback about the project and we'll do our best to answer to the best of our ability. Thank you. And we also have with us right now, Sean Rose. Rose. So Sean is a communications practitioner and he is also the project manager for Green Rocks in St. Vincent in the Grenadines. And Sean is located in St. Vincent. Actually at the moment, at the moment uh, I am in Florida, Miami, Florida. Okay. Uh, not just about four hours away from St. Vincent. So you're not he too could far off. be right off. there if you need it. <laughs> That's <Okay>. right. <laughs> yes. So welcome, Sean. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. To clarify the, 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 the questions that are had. So as Mel said, if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Let us know what it is you'd like to know. And we'd like to answer your questions and clarify anything for you today. So let's start at the beginning. I always like definitions. I'm a definition person because I find that people will say words without actually knowing what they mean or fully comprehending what they mean. So let's start at the beginning. What is a condominium? And I will put that up to Mel to answer that one. Okay. So a condominium is actually shared ownership of a property. Um, it means that uh, opposed to you buying a house or a unit on your own, you are sharing the ownership and you're also sharing in the expenses. So it just means that people coming together and sharing in, in a property. That's what a condominium concept is all about. There's governance, there's rules and regulations that, and there's a governing body over the entire entity. So in the Green Rocks development um, project, the owners actually form that governance. And that's rare because, um, condominiums here in North America, uh, you have to be elected because there's multiple people who usually own the entire um, property. But in this, because it's a smaller unit, um, each owner will actually sit on the board and that gives them voting rights and privileges to um, decide on how the condominium will be um, managed and maintained. Okay, and so I, we are gonna get into more detailed discussion about what Green Rocks is exactly, how it how it looks and how many units, but you said it's a smaller build and how many units would it contain? It's six units and there's five units for sale. So okay. in, a, in essence, it's a, it's a property that originally I was building and I could have easily built it as a apartment complex, which is one unit with um, one unit at the top with five other units for rental, for local rental. Um, but that comes with the challenges as well. So opposed to having a um, apartment building with, with tenants, um, it's the units are actually individually available for sale. Okay, and you said something about cooperative ownership. So this is a question for me. What would be then the difference between a condominium and a co-op? Well, the governance is slightly different with a co-op and co-ops usually involve government uh, funding and oversight. And they usually come also with um, stricter rules and regulations in terms of the income of the, of the people who live in the cooperative development because there's, gov there's government funded injected into that development. Uh, I haven't heard or do, do not know of any cooperative developments in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And as far as I understand, condominiums is still, a, is a still a fairly new concept to St. Vincent, especially on the mainland. Okay, so to be clear then, so from my understanding, 
Um, a condo is actually, you have ownership in it. Each unit is individually owned and they actually own that property. And then together they govern the property. Whereas okay. in a co-op, you are a tenant, correct? And You're you a tenant. Yes. Own the property. Okay. So that's the difference between a co-op and a condominium. So even though you're being cooperative in the condominium, yes. you own it privately and everybody gets together, makes the rules, makes the ordinances so that they can all live in harmony. Correct? That's correct. Awesome. Okay. So my next question is, and this one is for Sean, um, where in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is this project going to be located? So this is ideally uh, located in the villa area. And Villa is, it has a tradition of being a, a tourism zone, tourist okay. zone. Uh, it's definitely one of the areas where you'll find most of the tourism establishments, hotels, restaurants, just about five minutes walk from Green Rocks and you're pretty much on the dock uh, looking at Long Island, uh, Young, uh, Young's Island Resort, which is a popular destination for weddings and most people in the million and up uh, bracket income bracket um, you've you've had a number of high profile weddings there I can't recall any at the moment specifically but a number of high profile weddings have taken place on Young's Island and it's one of those uh, destinations that many people again who are in the millionaire to the billionaire bracket often visit along that particular strip the villa strip there are beaches a number of historical sites Fort Juvenet Cross Island these have a number of uh a meaningful historical significance and many people have been discovering these these particular sites within recent times Fort Juvenet in particular which as the name suggests was once a fort and 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 um, Duvenet for the most part as far as I have checked is really a French word and we 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 have checked that particular aspect of it and we know that the the French were the ones who set up uh, that particular fort. I can't give you the date at this time. But what is also interesting is that Kaliakwa, which uh, is very in close proximity to the villa area, is also a French word. So you see the influence of the French, you coming from Canada would appreciate this, is very much within the fabric of that particular community. So it's a middle to upper income community and you don't own property in that area um, so easily. It's difficult to get persons who are willing to sell and anyone who is going to buy a condominium here uh, with the Green Rocks project would find themselves in, a, in, a, in, a, in the ideal location to not just own this property for private use and, and purposes, but also for business and um, yes. for example, Airbnb or maybe specific vacation, um, selective vacation rentals. You know, you can really use this particular site to your advantage because it has all the, the the amenities and the positives attached to it. You're not too far from Kingstown, the main capital. Probably on a on a light traffic day, about 20 minutes to half an hour drive. Half an hour is really an, uh, an exaggeration, in fact. That's, that's too far. Okay. Um, the airport is just about 20 minutes away as well, the Argyle International Airport. And then in Kingston, you have easy access also to the Grenadine Islands via ferry. But you can also get there on all of the islands, uh, Bekwe, Musti, Kanawan, Union Island, uh, via, air, via air, uh, airplane. And, um, and you can also take ferries and, and there, are, there are a number of, of excursions that leave right out of... Um, not just Kingston, but also out of uh, the villa area. It's it's their number of. Um, uh, I'm not so sure. I'll I'll give those particular listing um, businesses a plug right now, but um, the, na the names are coming to mind as to who you can go to and, and rent a ferry. Sorry, not a ferry, uh, an island excursion via a catamaran or monohull, whichever you prefer, and you know enjoy the sights and scenes of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So you're really right in the middle of the tourism belt. It's a high-end tourist destination, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we all know that. A niche market for a number of people coming out of uh, America and Europe and beyond. And you're likely to interact with Germans and, and, and um, people from France and you name it in that particular area. So it has always been to an entertainment zone. We've had a number of establishments there, aquatic club, um, 
the, 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 the iguana, and a number of other establishments that were excellent places for nighttime entertainment. So apart from your restaurants and your hotels and the beach and, and Young's Island Resort and access to, to all of these uh, day cruises and long-term uh, uh, you know, uh, yachting experiences and so forth, there is also the, the nightlife activities that you that you'll have right pretty much at your doorstep. You don't have to travel for too far to enjoy yourself within that, that particular context if you're visiting St. Vincent. Wow. So from what you've told me, what you're explaining is that this property is ideally located. It is, you know, I use the term sometimes in sharing about Green Rocks, but it is honestly the truth that this is a dream property. It is absolutely um, perfectly situated. Yes, have, it's ideally, ideally situated. You're right. Yeah, it's, it's near every amenity. You're not far out in the hills. You won't be secluded. You're near the great beach because I have had friends who have bought properties in, in the islands or near, near beaches, but come to find out they're a couple of blocks away. So right. they, you know, they have to take a car, they have to take a bus to be able to go to the beach, but here you'd be able to actually walk right over. Yeah, the location, again, we can say so much about the location specifically, and I can't say too much about, I can't say enough, I beg your pardon, about Fort Juvenile and what that means. Just the experience from a health perspective, walking up that rock, the, the, the many steps that you, you, you have to uh, take to get up to the top. Um, it's, it's an exercise activity by itself. You know, it's really a health um, expedition that you'll be embarking on simply to get up to the top of Fort Juvenile, as simple as that little rock appears to many people. Like, for example, La Soufre is about 4,800 feet high. That's our highest peak in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, but, and getting up there is really, a, 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 it takes a day for you to, you know, get yourself up to the, to the, the foot of the hills and then begin that walk. And by the time you're up and, and back down, you've completed a day. And many people would tell you, including myself, uh, the next day and maybe two, three days after, you feel the impact on your muscles. You feel as though you've been in the gym somewhere doing some heavy lifting. So for Juvenet in and of itself is a convenient way for you to, to, to also include some, some health activities and some, some health and wellness activities in your trip. So to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Trip. Yeah, right. and, maintaining yep. a healthy lifestyle. And then we yep. all know the sea air, um, the food, the fresh fruits, the, 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 the seafood, and also to the people. I've heard nothing but positive you experiences go. coming out of St. Vincent, and I do look forward to being able to report from there, and I, and I really do look forward to that. I know Melba can speak to a lot of this because she's been experiencing it, and it's good to hear it from her because folks may say, well, Sean is a Vincentian, and he would only say good things about, about his island, but you're right. You're, you yeah. know what, Sean? You're absolutely right. And it would be very good for a Canadian, somebody who, you know, was born here, raised here, lives here, to, to chime in and give their view of what it has been like to go to St. Vincent. Now, to be honest with you, Sean, there was a point that I started, I actually thought Melba moved there because I would see her <laughs> post from there so often that right. I thought she was, she had completely re relocated. And then I was told, no, 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 she's still in a suburb of Toronto. I was like, oh, you wouldn't know it. So Mel, can you tell <laughs> us a bit about your experience in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, what it has been like? I know that's why I'm smiling so much because she has shared with me her joys of visiting but you tell us a bit like as a foreigner you know tell us what it's been like for you yeah I just want to start with the Fort Duvernay experience I you know I heard Sean Sean speak about it and I had never I had never did the trek so it was on my to-do list and this past May we did the trek and first of all timing is key because you don't want to walk up 225 stairs at 12 noon Right, so we <laughs> we pick early afternoon when the sun is is not as hot. Uh, it you know it's it's literally not even five minutes by water water taxi. You just go to the dock. You know you know you he tells you it's what ten dollars return or EC you get, and he just brings you right there. You get out and then you start the trek up. And uh, yeah, Sean, you're very right. 
it was some exercise, that's for sure. But once you get to the top, Sean, you failed to mention the 360 view of St. Oh my, breathtaking, yes, yes. The 360 view. Now there's a couple of peak points over the years I've had experience. Um, top of Sign Hill, uh, Port Charlotte. Um, there's a lookout up there at top of Sign Hill. There's another one at Port Charlotte where you get a very, very nice view. You get a very nice view um, in Cane Garden looking over Kingstown. But this view on the top of Port Charlotte, like I couldn't take enough footage to really capture yes. it, to be honest. I took a small video there. I, you know, we took, try to capture it with a panorama. You still cannot. And you can see where green rocks would be located from there as well. Exactly. That's exactly yes. what I did. I zoomed in from there and we were looking at the road and says, well, that's where green rocks is going to be because yes. green rocks, the scene, the scenic view from green rocks is over to Fort Duvernay and you could stay on Fort Duvernay and look over and see. That's right. And see, uh, see St. Vincent. So that was an experience on its own. Um, you know, um, Dante, my son, went with me on this last trip and he said, um, even though we spent majority of the trip in business meetings, he said this was one of his best trips to St. Vincent ever. And I've been taking him from since he was about five or six years old and he's now in his early twenties. So what, what, why, have I, why have I fallen in love with St. Vincent so much? And I, I'm a traveler, right? Erica knows this, a lot of people know this. I've been to a lot of different places. I, you know, I've been to Jamaica several times. I've been to the Bahamas. I've been to St. Lucia, Trinidad, Barbados. I've, I've stopped in a lot of different places. Um, dollar for dollar. This is the number one thing I want to speak about. Dollar for dollar. It's a very economical trip. Even yes. if I had to pay for accom accommodations, it's two to one Canadian to Eastern Caribbean dollars. So that's not, that's the most thing that that you know drives me. If I'm going to decide where I'm going to go, you know, if I'm looking at whatever my budget is, you know, tickets, price tickets from Toronto to um, any Caribbean destination start around the thousand dollar mark range. On mm -hmm. the off season, you can get a ticket to St. Vincent now direct. I've seen it for around eight hundred dollars. Now this is the um, this is the, the essence here now, because before the international airport, you would burn a day, two days, right. one day travel. Barbados or somewhere yeah. else, yep. You'd have to lay over in Barbados, you have to lay over Trinidad, you have to expense costs for um, hotels, etc. And I did this even before Argyle International Airport came to fruition. I experienced it because I caught the bug years ago and I wanted to keep coming, going back. But now with the ease of travel, like, I cannot begin to explain to you how much this has, has touched me and changed my life, right? So in the high season, Air Canada Rouge has a Thursday and Sunday flight. Right away, I said, wow, one day off or two days off a Thursday and Friday, I can fly now to St. Vincent for an extended weekend. I need to repeat. Wow. I can fly to St. Vincent in high season for an extended weekend. These are only things I used to be able to do with Jamaica and Barbados. You know, I've seen it. I've seen my friends do it. I've done it. I've, I've flown to Jamaica for an extended weekend. Now, this is where, you know, this is where you start to see real value, right? Yep. I've heard people say before that St. Vincent is boring and that hurts me because Every time I go to St. Vincent. Some Vincent's folks just don't know what to identify. Like, like the conversation we had that, that took you to Fort Duvernay, for example. They don't know. They don't there's know. There's so many other things that we can talk about that I know you haven't checked out as yet. Exactly. You know what I mean? I have Falls of Belen on my list. There's all these places in South Rivers. And every day I look on my feet, St. Vincent. If you, if you follow Pound, St. Vincent and the Grenadines on Instagram, there's places on there I've never been to. Like they're on my to-do list. You know what I mean? I just saw another floating bar now in Beckway. I've never been there. I need to put these things on my list. So the thing about it is there's so much stuff to do in St. Vincent. You just need time, <laughs> some money, exactly. energy. So I, I want to tell you all a true story. Yeah. The other day, my mother said to me, when was the last time you've been to the spa? I said, the last time I've been to the spa was in St. Vincent. The best spa experiences I've ever had are in St. Vincent. 
Where did you go? I mean, we're yeah. giving folks, I, I don't want to be giving folks, you I know. I have to plug because when it's good, <laughs> I have to talk about it. I have to talk about it. And I have to talk about yes. my spa experience because every time I go as a female, I'm going to relax. Everybody says to me, Melba, you need to relax. Well, send me to St. Vincent and the Grandies and let me relax down there. You understand? Because that's what relaxation is to me. And there has mm. always been now a spa experience. So when um, Bokemet was open, I experienced that. Oh, yes. Fantastic. I have the oil from that I bought because the massage was so good. And Erica, so you have I. Know, yes. our benefits that we have here, there's a lot of spas. I've been to spas here. I've gone for RTM sessions and everything. There's nothing like, no, no, no. You, I went to Young Island Spa in January. Oh, wow. You get in, the, the first thing she's doing is she's washing my feet, Erica, I can't begin to tell you. Like, I, I need to take you and I need yeah. to you to experience because I can't even articulate it. The whole well, I'm, I'm coming here to experience this myself. I'm, I'm on my way, so. Yeah, I, I need to bring you, that. I need to bring you. There is yeah. another spot in Beckway that I can tell you, like I've gone there now, Serenity Spa twice now. And the last time the sugar scrub and everything, the, and once again, the two for one, dollar for dollar. You can get yourself yes. treated daily. And, you know, as you were saying about the location, you know, we spoke about what is the condominium? What is the location, which is super convenient? Yes. You are in a tourist district. As a foreigner, you do not have to feel like you're going to be thrown into the hills of St. Vincent and have nowhere to go or no way around because you're central. But then you just brought up some other very important points. The safety factor. What would it feel like to be even a woman traveling alone? How safe would you be in St. Vincent? Um, you talked about relaxation. And I think knowing you own a property somewhere else that one, you can utilize even for a weekend getaway, um, which would end up saving you so much money, beneficial to your friends and family. But then all the weeks that you're not there because of the location, because of the amenities, because of the rise in tourism for the island, um, you're now looking at all of your vacations being free because you're actually going to be making money on a property that isn't when, when it's not in use by yourself. So right. the value of this project is enormous. And you said something else because I have another question, but I'm going to skip ahead and we'll go back. Um, you said from where you were at the fort, you can actually look around and you'll see where green rocks will be. Now, for the people who are watching and are astute, they'll say, wait, you said where it will be, not where it is. Mm -hmm. And yes, this is a pre-construction um, um, concept. Now, I, I'm from Montreal now living in Toronto and um, Toronto's are, uh, Toronto has far, it's, it's just a bigger city. So obviously there are way more condominiums, but even in Montreal, because condos in Montreal, especially on the island, you don't have as many. Um, it's, it's an older city. But what fascinated me was when I found out that, you know, well, that building is sold. And I'm like, well, what do you mean the building is sold? There's just a hole in the ground. It's like, oh, no, all the units are sold already. And now they're finishing construction. Yep. Now, mm -hmm. here in Toronto, um, it, the, the bigger builders, it, they're notorious for selling whole communities before they're built. They secure <laughs> the land from the city. They get their zoning. They put out their concept. They build a few of the units. And there's nothing behind and based on the units that they show, and sometimes they don't even build the units, it's a virtual um, plan that you're shown, and they sell thousands upon thousands of units in Toronto, I would venture to say weekly um, in this fashion. So the pre, I understand this because I've seen this my whole life where buildings are sold before they're built. Um, but I know that for some people who are not used to it, this is a completely different concept. So they're used to you saying, there's the building, do you want to buy it? Whereas here, um, you're, it is pre-concept. Now, one of the benefits to pre-concept that any good listing agent can tell you is that you often get to pick your finishing. So you'll get ah, to decide right. your countertops, you'll get to decide your flooring. Um, you can often upgrade. And even if the builder themselves is not offering you that option. Some projects will allow you to say, okay, well, I want this material, install this material. So you're also getting a custom unit um, 
for your money. And being the first at owning a property, I, I, I have not been that person as yet, but I can only imagine what a thrill it is. And to know that the specifications, what you're looking at, were your heart's desire. So that is one of the benefits, one of, I'm sure, many benefits of a pre-construction concept. And um, Sean, is there anything you want so to this, add? Yeah, to this that? is a great point. This is a great point, to uh, a great time to include um, the, the fact that uh, the two-bedroom, two-bathroom, that ensuite experience, the lock and leave concept, meaning you can literally have control over, over entry to your unit, wherever you are in this world, the, the green uh, concept that is being included here, the fact that th there is this uh, modern technology approach to access to the building. There's also the use of, uh, of, of, of solar power, which is expanding now in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. You see, this concept to roll back a bit is new to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but we have to recall as well that St. Vincent, on a, St. Vincent and the Grenadines on a whole is new to the world in terms of easy access. Because as Melba pointed out, many people were deterred um, hitherto to get into, into the island because of the fact that you had to lay over somewhere. So now it's open to the world. The gates are wide open now and more people are interested in getting in we're going to see, and we are seeing already, a change in the real estate in, uh, in, in industry. We are seeing people uh, coming in and expressing interest in buying uh, large parcels of land for development purposes of various sorts. We were, at the moment, there are about three or four ho uh, hotel projects in the conceptual stages. At least one of them is already being built. And we know that uh, Bokoma was closed uh, some years ago now still closed but that too is 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 um, getting ready to, to to open up so people with an investor's eye are looking at saint vincent with the eye of an eagle they're, they're they're saying hey this place is expanding it's transforming this is a place i want to zero in on so green rocks given the smart technology concepts that are being included here the the, the accessibility the location and that ease of ownership of a property that you can use for private and, and business purposes makes it a very unique type of, of, uh, of, of establishment or business establishment for anyone. And, you know, it's not very often you can get a, a property that can be used for both residential and business purposes, given the location where this is, uh, this is situated. So, you know, I, I think one of the things that many people take for granted is the fact that real estate is really long-term wealth, retirement wealth in the making, for, you know, because as we say in St. Vincent, land can't die. And when you invest in properties like this, what you're really doing is securing uh, a retirement, of course, immediate, immediate revenue, but the long-term benefits of this kind of revenue is the tremendous part because it means that you really don't have to do much after you've invested about what half a million dollars, four hundred and something thousand uh, dollars US into this property. I am pretty sure that it wouldn't take too long before folks see a return on their investment and 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 exceed their own expectations because Melba did say that, um, and of course it's written in the whole concept that selling your property is also your prerogative, you may decide, and I, I don't want to, to, to give away, um, you know, these ideas too early, but I think it's quite evident that someone may buy this property for just over $400,000 now, and maybe another year or two, they may be selling for twice or maybe three times what they have paid to get in. Because the value of properties, especially again in the area where we're talking about villa, is always on the rise. Um, Melba might be able to tell you what what she has experienced in terms of value per, per square foot and and the, the cost of properties when she first got to that area and where they are now. Because for me, as a young person growing up, only a select few owned lands, owned properties in that particular district. Just and that's just like 10, 15, 20 years ago. We have seen a major transformation now in terms of what's happening in that particular area. So this is like prime time for anyone with an investor's eye.
So as you were saying, and there's two points, and I'm going to have Melba answer a bit of this because she had a spectacular answer for me before, and I was actually quite blown away by the tech involved in this project. But something that you've mentioned and people really need to keep in mind is about change and how quickly things change. Um, technology has our, our whole society moving forward exponentially. What used to take 20 years started to take 10, took five, now takes two, now takes a few months. Um, technology, in, it, it changes very quickly, but also the global view, um, our disappearing borders in most places. Um, the fact that um, people travel more, and you were saying something about wealth, and not only is it retirement wealth, but it is also generational wealth that you're building. Because when this is passed on, as you said, what was four or 500,000 now, as we see with the property values here in Toronto themselves, um, it increases exponentially. I also know, um, if you're from the Caribbean, you'll understand this term. I also know that the small islands of the Caribbean, they hold a special charm. Um, the people that know, know. There are a lot of luxury properties in a lot of the smaller islands because they're not visited as much and they're exclusive. So as they become more popular, you want to be on the upward curve of that and not catch it at the end where everything is now 1.2, 1.5 million dollars. Um, but I wanted Melba to address a bit of the tech because again, obviously I'm speaking from my perspective, I am a woman and you think about your security, your safety, especially when visiting a foreign place, someplace where you have not yet established ties and communication. And then also to um, worrying about leaving that property for long periods of time. Um, many people who are going to purchase will not live there full time. So they want to know what will happen to my property when I'm not there for several months at a time. So Melba, can you tell us a little bit about the tech involved in this? Definitely. Um, before I do, I want to touch on the security part because it's the number one question that I get, is St. Vincent safe? Anytime I talk about St. Vincent, people who are not familiar, is St. Vincent safe? Now I'm a female and I've traveled to St. Vincent several times on my own. And I have to say that St. Vincent is a very, very, very safe place to travel. I, I've gone to several different parts of St. Vincent um, on my own, a company with friends and family. And I've, uh, to be honest, I've never been in a situation where touch wood that I felt like I, I was being threatened or in a, in, a, in a place where I felt like I was unsafe. So I just wanna, I just wanna start off by mentioning that. The smart home technology, it's, it's new, but it's not that new. I would have to say I was introduced in the smart home technology maybe less than 10 years ago. And because I'm a very technical person, that is my area, which I work on a full-time basis. I was very, um, I was very intrigued with this, with the smart home concept. And I'm actually, I actually piloted, started to pilot in one of my, in, in my other property. So how does the smart home technology work? Well, it all works, starts with this, right? Your, your phone, right? Um, so the whole, the whole unit is hooked up to your phone and it will come with the standard uh, features. We're talking CO detector, smoke and fire detector, uh, uh, entry um, detection as well. And then you can add on all kinds of features. We're piloting smart, uh, Samsung Smart Home. All the information is on our website. And basically, and it works extremely well, sometimes too well, because we've been using it now for nearly two years, is that anytime there is any sense of uh, unsafe environment in the household, uh, you, get a, you get an alert on your phone. So we've had issues with water, we've gotten alerts. We've had in issues with uh, detection of smoke, potential fire, you get an alert. As well as um, the video doorbell. Those of you he here who are here in, in, in North America know about the video doorbell. You know, you click the doorbell, you can see who's at your door. You can unlock your door from your phone. This is anywhere in the world. Um, and uh, over and above all of the smart home technology with your unit, uh, I wanted to ensure the overall um, uncertainty of the project for our buyers by allowing the buyers to virtually monitor the entire construction. So this is extremely new. Like when I went to, um, you know, when I went to ITF Solutions and I explained what it is that I wanna do, he was like, what? You know what I mean? Like, what is it you wanna do? I said, yeah, I wanna install cameras on the site. I want a portal. 
And I want to be able to log in 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and be able to see what's happening there. So not only are we going to tell you, you know, give you all the phases and what's happening with the construction, we're going to allow you to log in and see for yourself. So there's technology on this from start to finish. So those cameras will roll into the security. You'll be able to log in at any time, as well as get alerts on your phone to be able to see what's happening um, on, at Green Rock. So this is ultimate security for me as a female, as everybody's security and safety and security as everybody's number one and should be everybody's number one priority. And this was very uh, important to me to have this uh, incorporated in the solution. Well, I think you might have just answered my um, next question <laughs> with, with what you just said. But one of the questions would be from people wondering, OK, why would I do this instead of going to, to St. Vincent? finding a piece of land and building it my building a home myself like why being being in a unit with six other people um what are the benefits of buying over build just building it myself i know okay. the answer, but. <laughs> <laughs> there's i'm gonna this is the truth about green rocks right and i want to be very uh transparent and i want people to really understand my story and hence why we're doing this right so why build but on your own well, I tried it and I failed, not just once, twice. So there's a lot of builders in St. Vincent. and I'm gonna speak very frankly here. Um, there are different types of ways that they can estimate a build. And I'm just gonna talk about the whole project delivery. So Green Rocks, the condominium project is pre-priced with a quality uh, surveyor down to all the last finishings. So the reason for the pre-construction is to secure the financial uh, entity of the project. With pre-construction, we can, we can have fixed price uh, term agreement with our builders. We can have a procurement uh, schedule. What you pay is what you pay. There is no room for error. When we say you sign the deed and you say this is, this is the price of the unit, unless you like to upgrade, like you mentioned, you have, you have the ability to upgrade, pick your colors, pick your finishes if you don't, if you don't want um, to have that type of flooring and you want to have ceramic right through and additional cost, those, that, that's what would increase your cost. But your standard unit will come with everything included. Your, your, all your amenities, parking, storage, AC, smart home solution, et cetera, et cetera. All the information is available on the website. One price solution, all encompassing. That's what Green Rocks is all about. Now, if you decide to build on your own, there are several phases that you go through. Now I've already gone through these phases and I went through these phases starting in 2014. This has been a five year plus journey now. You know, you have to develop your plans. You have to, um, you have to get an estimate. Now let's even talk about the estimation process. When you, when you estimate, when you get your architectural plans, your architect actually puts a number on there, whether you pay attention to it or not, there's a threefold uh, document that you get and he actually estimates the cost to build your building. Now that cost that he puts on there that gets submitted to planning is the raw material. Now this is where a lot of people fail. Your estimate is usually done based on your raw material, which means you know, Sean could even explain this better than I can, but block cement and that's it. Maybe the roof and, and that's it. We are not talking about finishings. And moreover, we're not talking about finishings that what you would get here in North America versus what you would get in the St. Vincent, which is a huge difference as well. So what they usually give you is a paramedic estimate, which is around $150 a square foot. So they say, okay, this is how much your, this is the size of your unit. We're gonna multiply that by $150 uh, a square foot. And they said, this is about how much it's gonna cost you to build. And then you go and say, wow, that's affordable. Usually, typically they'll price a two bedroom unit at 250,000 Eastern Caribbean dollars. This is what I hear, this is what I understand. And you go ahead <laughs> and you start to build. The problem being is they don't account for the preparation of land. They don't account for your finishings. They don't account for contingencies, et cetera, et cetera. And what I've seen in the past is that usually more than half of your estimate is eaten up in your foundation, building the foundation. And by that time, you've already sinked thousands of dollars into your build and started and you get all excited. 
you have no choice but either abandon it or move on and it will take a lot longer and a lot more money. And this is where a lot of people get caught. So do you wanna deal with all that headache? You start, you know, you start hearing about all the stories of construction that has started and they feel that you know, they were mistreated or they feel that they've been ripped off, et cetera, et cetera. They don't, understand the, um, they don't understand the problems and the risks that come along with construction. Um, and they, they go ahead and they take on that risk. When you buy a condominium, the risk gets transferred to the developer. Which is so all you pay is that set price and the risk is transferred. And what do I do? I transfer the risk, part of the risk to the builder by a fixed price contract. So this is where you do pro proper project management. And Sean and I have many, 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 many discussions about this. And there have been many, many, many discussions about how Green Rocks is gonna be built, price, estimated, et cetera, et cetera. So okay. one sentence, sorry, yeah. in one sentence, Melba, tell us, or tell us why is it better to build, to buy over building yourself? You transfer the risk. You transfer the risk. You transfer so the risk and, and, and the cost of risk. There is you a- save money. And you save money in the long yeah. run by no. buying a condominium. Yeah. You know, in, in, in addition to that, Erica, before you go forward very quickly, not only do you save money in terms of uh, completing the build within a specific time frame, you know, that discipline, that efficacy that uh, this particular mod model brings to the construction of the property, mm -hmm. but you also, you also save money in terms of the ongoing maintenance, which by the way, in this concept, it, the maintenance is being managed would be managed by a, um, a highly reputable team of people on an ongoing basis and so forth and you can you see your skill sets st vincent and the grenadines isn't short on that just a matter of where you go shopping who you select and, and so forth now if you're building on your own it's unlikely that you're going to get your hands on the kind of information that will inform that process. So you, you can easily pick up the wrong people along the way because you haven't had the time to look. You, haven't, you don't have the right machinery in place to find the people who can deliver in an efficacious manner. Okay? Now, one of the things I've noticed in construction over the years in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is in relation to what Melba said, about the process, you could very well uh, find yourself cutting corners as you build. Cutting corners in the sense that the quality of the materials that you use, the quality of the, for argument's sake, the, 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 um, the aggregates that is used, the, 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 the use of certain specific, let's say, for example, steel. Folks may cut. Uh, the number of steel that they know should go into the into the construction of a column simply because they're trying to save money on the back end. They are aware that, okay, we've gone maybe six months into the uh, completion date for the construction of this particular project. And with that comes the extra cost on labor and materials. And one way to cut cost is to find ways to cut back on the use of certain materials within the build. You may find that the particular way how the, uh, the, 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 the building was designed, that is the plan, calling maybe for six, four columns within a, uh, a particular spacing, the builder may decide, okay, we don't need that much because we have to find ways to cut back on cost anyway, so let's go for four. And that, and that adds up. Now, what that does, it compromises the structure eventually. And whenever you have you know shifts in soil or, or maybe... Um, changes in temperature and so forth, you see the result. Now, this, this particular thing, this particular aspect of it is very important. And as Melba said, you're transferring the risk. The ongoing aspect where maintenance is concerned, you don't want after you've built your home, you see cracks all over the, wall, all over the, um, the walls. And usually that's one reason, because folks have been finding ways to cut cost. And in so doing, the homeowner carries the burden of long-term cost in terms of repairs and, 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 and bringing solutions to problems that started from the very uh, construction stages. So that is very unique in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and folks tend to mask it by finding ways to cover up whatever mistakes or, or, or shortcuts that they took. 
but um, you can't remedy that unless you start with a solid process, as in this case, where you have a, a procedure that is more or less foolproof. And the, cons the, the person, the, the contracting team, they have that full responsibility to deliver based on all the uh, prerequisites set out in the contract. And at the end of the day, everyone benefits. The contractor delivers a, pro uh, a product or project that is above par, you know, and, and, and would also market, market their work and, and maybe find additional, um, more customers and additional work by virtue of the fact that they have delivered on a project that is within budget, within time, and is excellent, not just aesthetically, but structurally, you know, when you, when you uh, evaluate and you see the results. So in summary, then the benefit of buying, buying the project, buying into the project over building yourself is that the research, the work has been done for you. After yeah. years of traveling back and forth to St. Vincent as somebody from foreign, as we say, um, you have one situated yourself there, found out more about the island, but in endeavoring to build your own properties, you've found out the pitfalls. So basically this is like passing on information. So instead of starting from zero and trying to get to a hundred, um, Mel has actually started at zero and she can start you off at 67 so that you don't have to go through the whole process yourself. So in terms of finding contractors and so forth, and most private bills will not have cameras installed so that you can see what's going on every single day as it's built. So things like cutting um, costs, cutting corners, they would be actually seen. So you have a great deal of security in actually watching your place be built. I know I watched an uncle of mine watch a home that he bought in Toronto built where he used to visit daily, watch the foundation be poured and so forth. So somebody here or in the States or in Europe that were to purchase this property would have the same benefits. Now, my next question, which, um, you, you kind of, and I mean, you touched a bit on it, Sean, is what would this, what does this project mean for St. Vincent and the Grenadines? And you were mentioning the contractor that it would, you know, be beneficial for the contractor and they would deliver a project. But to be honest, anybody watching this, this program is interested in themselves. They're not really interested in what the benefit is for the contractor. What am I getting from it? And for those in St. Vincent and the Grenadines who obviously, the support of the island, the support of the people and the, the passing of the information would be very important, right? We want um, the, the, the natives of the land and, and the people that are there to be happy and to feel it is a benefit to them. So speaking to the people now of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, um, because they're the ones that are gonna wanna really know, well, what does it do for them? Because th the outside investors are often not as interested in the whole picture as the people who live there. So for St. Vincent, uh, briefly, because we are going to go to our question and answer period, um, what does this project mean for St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Well, this is a groundbreaking project for St. Vincent and the Grenadines because there aren't any other condominium uh, projects at the moment in St. Vincent. Of course, there are rental apartments, and as we said, there are hotels and so forth and guest houses. So from that perspective, it's definitely groundbreaking. And again, the location, even that conversation we had about transfer and risk, you can't find land in that particular location for a private build that easily. You're gonna spend a whole lot more, um, even if you do. The, 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 other, the other factor that really comes in here in terms of what it means for St. Vincent and the Grenadines is the mutually beneficial relationship, that synergy between various facets of the society. For example, the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College, which is just um, less than two miles away, you know, um, again, another five minute walk. Um, out of that community college comes a number of entrepreneurial activities. And today we saw an example of that in the form of a banana wine. Now, you know, you're accustomed to wine being made from grapes and so forth. But a banana wine coming out of St. Vincent is a, a huge sell, not just for the island, but the college itself. And out of that particular college, there's also uh, furniture that's, that's made. There's upholstery. A number of things come out of that college. That relationship with the students would help to 
um, create a space for young entrepreneurs to get their products um, you know, uh, out on the international market because maybe someone who is going to buy one of, of those five av available uh, um, units would want uh, a bed made by the students at the college. And I'm sure they, they, would be, they would be blown away to see the quality of work that those students would produce. Maybe, that, maybe someone might be interested in buying the wines currently being made by these students and a number of other things, table mats and you name it, curtains, you name it. So the, it's, it's really an unlimited set of opportunities and, and possibilities in terms of the relationship with the community from a business perspective and also from a tourism perspective in that we are creating additional um, space for, for accommodation for persons coming in to enjoy our island and get, getting to know St. Vincent and the Grenadines and also from an investment perspective where more people, at least five of them um, from the onset, will get a chance to invest in this unique tourism destination and, and, and again open up St. Vincent and the Grenadines to the world of, of possibilities. Erica, I just wanted to comment on that a little bit more as well. Uh, when we talk about benefiting the Vincentian economy, first of all, just the project in itself is already starting to benefit the economy because uh, all the pre-costs that come with this type of project, legal fees, um, you know, the planning department, land surveyors, all the things people don't talk about when it comes to building a house. There's a whole long process that even before you get to the stage of this, where we have the, just to prepare the condominium, what we call the status certificate, the equivalent of that, the declaration in St. Vincent is a whole long process on its own. So already Green Rocks has, you know, uh, has, has that relationship and is already working with the economy there in St. Vincent. Another thing too is I would say this whole project is 95% Vincentian, right? I, I wouldn't even, a lot of people say I'm not Vincentian, right? They say I'm Canadian. Um, so, you know, of the 5% is my executive team. And, uh, and the one, we had four architects on this project. Uh, one of the architects who did the rendering is actually Canadian. Uh, then we talk about the concierge service, right? The maintenance of the, of the whole condominium concept will all be established in Sension businesses that we will contract to maintain and facilitate uh, everything that we need to, to properly run the Green Rocks condominium. Uh, on top of it, we have the concierge service, uh, which we, you know, you can find this information on our website as well. So basically, and this is what really gets me excited because we want to go to St. Vincent to de-stress, but we don't want the stress of trying to get our house and everything up and running to be able to enjoy it. So the condominium property is gonna facilitate that, pick you up, have, your, have your, your unit cleaned and ready and ready for you when you arrive, pre-stock if you'd like to have your unit pre-stock and, and, and take care of your unit after you've left. So pretty much the lock and leave means you lock, you leave and, and it will be taken care of for you. All of this will be done by established Vincentian businesses in St. Vincent. Melty Project is not going to have any employees per se. These will all be contracted services, which the board, the condominium board will decide who will, you know, if those businesses are fitting the needs and if we need to change and adjust, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that, you see, again, the technology, I, I find it amazing. And Interestingly, there was actually a disclaimer that I had for the very beginning of this, which I'm going to make now at the end, which as we discuss um, how it benefits the people of St. Vincent, how, what is the benefit for the people investing in it, whether or not they're from St. Vincent or from foreign, um, this is a bipartisan project. There is no political affiliation whatsoever. Now, people that are watching from abroad um, may be wondering what that means. But for the Vincentians, you understand. And just to be very clear, this is a bipartisan project. There, there is no political affiliation. So keep that in mind. This has no, I repeat, this has no political affiliation. So the Green Rocks, Rocks Project is providing benefit to everyone involved. 
and even those that live in St. Vincent that are not directly, directly um, involved in the project will see the residual, the trickle down of the benefits to the island. And I believe that this project will spearhead um, a massive shift and change in um, the tourism industry, travel industry, and the popularity of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So I encourage anyone who is looking for an investment property, looking for a vacation property, or a combination of the two to check out the Green Rocks project. Um, Mel, can you please give us the web address that we would visit to it's, get more information? Great, thanks, Erica. It's www.greenrocks.net. And we're located, we are also available on all social media platforms as well, under Melty Properties. But you can find out more about the project. Uh, once again, it's www.greenrocks.net. And I also just want to add that Sutherland Real Estate is our listing uh, agent for um, this project. Unfortunately, he was not able to join the uh, live broadcast here today, but we might have a future one as well where he might be able to attend. We apologize for that. But uh, you can also contact him as well for any questions that you have about the Green Rocks project. Perfect. So unfortunately, Mr. Southern couldn't join us, but if um, it would be very nice to speak with him in the future. So as for myself too, if you have any questions about the Green Rocks project, and I would be very, very happy to pass them along to Mel, to Melty Properties. So please feel free to send me a message. I am not affiliated with the project in terms of the construction or anything, but I obviously am uh, a huge um, I don't think fan is the word, but I'll use that for now because that's the one that's coming up. And I'm very, very happy to pass on information or to connect you with Mel or to connect you with Sean so that you can get the information that you need to make this amazing investment. So any closing words, anything before? Well, we well this, has been, this has been a very useful exercise in the sense that, um, you know, we have these conversations uh, privately about the project and the benefits of the project to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And when it's done in this particular setting, you really get to see the value of what you're doing because you're, at least for me, I'm evaluating as I speak and as I listen and, and you, you, you feel the weight of the project. Um, the value of it is, uh, is, is um, amplified. And that certainly speaks volume for um, speaks volumes for a small country like ours, where we are seeing this change happening before our very eyes. And um, like like we said initially, um, you know, it, it it was quite unusual to see uh, folks going into the villa area who never had a footprint there before because it's high end. It's middle to upper income properties in that area. And within the last 10, 15 years or so, we have seen a transformation. And of course, with Airbnb, that too has brought about a change um, in the tourism landscape where accommodations are concerned. So we've seen that change. But this particular uh, project has been the subject of many discussions. Folks are saying, why should I get involved in, in a condominium project as opposed to building my own? And I think this conversation uh, answered all of those questions and and really showed pointed St. Vincent and the Grenadines uh, in the direction moving forward as to the opportunities available when we diversify the the, the accommodation um, opportunities that we have in St. Vincent and this is clearly going to be a trendsetter I personally believe that I think more people may very well embark on this as we speak and may look at other sites in the country for a project of this nature so you may see this being replicated at some point. Um, hopefully, uh, Melba can maintain that lead and, and, and benefit from the advantage and the trend that she has set and, and move on with the idea. But don't be surprised that you may see other people coming up with a similar concept and attempting to benefit from what is an evolving uh, industry in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So I'm happy to be a part of it. I know that uh, many people are excited about it and are very positive, you know, in anticipating the, the delivery of the project. So we look forward to the Green Rocks becoming a part of the Vincentian landscape and helping to attract people to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And I know that, Erica, you're going to be one of those um, visitors very soon. So remember, as I said to you privately, no one can show you St. Vincent and the Grenadines like I can. And I don't have to be there. 
<laughs> <laughs> we have the technology. So um, Sean just set himself up as a tour guide because I know everybody watching just has heard that too. Um, so we we may also have um, we may also have roles. Um, services as well um tourism services but we are very much looking forward to this project i thank everyone that's joined in again if you watch this on the replay um if you have any questions you can contact mel t um properties inc um mel renee on facebook on instagram uh green rocks you'll find facebook instagram and it's greenrocks.net Net. net and yep. just one last thing erica that i i would be doing injustice if i didn't thank the close to 30 people who have been working behind the scenes on this project it takes a lot of work to put this project together we've been going now a year and a half uh there's been so many people involved in this project there none of them are not on social media but they have supported me they have encouraged me in the times when i wanted to give up because it's there, it takes a lot of hard work and dedication, but I am so humbly grateful for all of them. Um, I, you know, I, I just can't thank them enough for their support and, uh, and being involved. Um, it, takes a, it takes a team to do something like this. And I really have a great team and it's growing. My team is growing. So I just, I, I, just, I have to thank them. I really have to, and they all know who they are. So thank you. Including Sean and yourself, Erica including China. But you know, Erica, we really should commend Melbourne embarking on something like this. This is not, again, this is not the normal type of activity that you may see. Even a lady embarking on in particular, a young lady. And, and this is this has no gender bias in it at all. It's just the fact that, you know, you're likely to see um, folks maybe of, of the male gender and certainly someone who has been um, in the wealth bracket um, in the high-end wealth bracket for some time, maybe who have benefited from some generational wealth themselves to, to embark on something like this. And it's certainly a bold move by Melba and we all should, um, you know, uh, embrace and, and encourage and support her as she moves forward with this particular initiative. I agree Thank with you, Thank you. completely, you. Sean. Um, but I'll be very honest. When she told me, I was not surprised at all. Um, if Melba told me she was building condos on the moon, I would not be surprised at all. Uh, she is a very, very, very capable and dedicated and determined woman. And I know that after decades of friendship. So um, I, again, I'm, I'm completely not shocked by this. There's not much that she reaches for um, that surprises me. And yes, Honestly, for the average woman, for the average person, this would be just an insane venture. Insurmountable, yeah. Mm -hmm. For for Mel, it, it is it is a very you know she's groundbreaking. She's doing things that no one else has done before and trying. But again, because of the woman that I know, I can truly say that I am not shocked. I think it's wonderful. I am elated. It is inspiring. Um, for so many, I think of the young women in Toronto that are going to look at this project and think to themselves, well, I could build some condos um, in this location. And so I, I don't know if she understands the power that she's wielding right now and the, the, the trail that she's blazing. But I have to say that even I myself am very, very inspired. And you make me feel as though that I can do things that were a bit beyond my imagination. So I thank you for everything that you're doing. And I pre-thank you for the wonderful time I'm going to have in St. Vincent. Um, and <laughs> thank you guys so much. <laughs> I, I, I will be posting many pictures. Some I won't be posting though, but you will definitely <laughs> see. I can, I can warn you in advance that the fish tastes the best. You would never taste fish like you're going to taste in St. Vincent. The food is organic, fresh. You, you're going to think you're in Eden, okay? I, I, I already know this. This I Oh, you are with <laughs> Taste the mango already. So yeah. I thank everyone yeah. for joining us. Thank you guys. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us or make a comment underneath this live. And if you need us to come back, we would definitely be happy to. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right. Great.